Good afternoon, MPC. Let's now have Presidential Spokesperson and Chief Presidential Legal Counsel, Salvador Panelo. Good noon, MPC members. May echo na naman. <laughs> there is an echo. An echo in the wind. <laughs> Questions, MPC? Thank you. So we're done? <laughs> Parang wala nagtatanong eh. Sino may magtatanong? RJ? Microphone, please. Hana, paabot. Salamat. Uh, I don't know, sir, if you are aware of this, but ES texted us that OP has officially informed PCGG that in it interposes no objections to the proposed activities relative to the disposal of the Marcus Jewel collection. Then PCGG should now undertake the process mm -hmm. of auctioning the Marcus Jewelries. All right. Thank you. May follow up, Don? Joseph? Joseph. Okay. Sino nga pala pumalit kay Ina? Si AC si Nichols. You, alam mo, hindi kita nakilala. Ang laki ng pinangayayat mo. Sir, another question. Yes. Sir, updates sa uh, government contracts being reviewed by the DOJ. Kasi sabi ni Secretary Menado Guevara, yes. this last uh, two weeks ago, dapat daw masasubmit na yung report to the President by the end of May. I don't know, sir, kung... Umabot na po sa OP. Wala, wala pa akong information. I will, I will, I will text Maynard Mamet. Secretary Maynard. All right. Thank you. Okay, questions. MPC. Tina Mendez. Sir, good afternoon. Sir, na-recall na po ba yung memo ni Presidente na tungkol sa travel ban ng mga government officials sa Canada? O any action Hindi ko pala, pero I think Parang si Secretary Luxin mentioned something about that. I think he mentioned about yung, ano, yung pinababalik na yung mga diploma sa Canada, but none yet oh, on, the, the on the government of, o, officials. Yung may memorandum preventi o reduce trips and interaction to Canada. Hindi, di ba ang gumawa ng memo yun si ano, Secretary Luxin? Doon siya rin ang magre-recall. No? no, sir, si ES po yung gumawa ng memo. Si ES? Mm. Oh, hindi si Secretary Luxin siguro. Most likely, it will come. Well, the very reason for the recall is precisely that waste issue. Since it has been resolved, it goes without saying that the memo will be recalled. Unless there is another serious issue, but I don't think there is one. Okay, questions, MPC, Janeline. Hello, sir. Rosalie. Janeline. Janeline Kabibu. <laughs> Sir, the Senate uh, said it, it lacks time to pass the ROTC bill. Are you, is the palace disappointed with this uh, development? If it lacks time, there is another new Senate coming up, so I don't think that's a problem. Are you hopeful the next Senate and uh, the next Congress could pass this as a priority measure again? Well, I think the members of the Senate also like this particular bill. Okay, may follow up sa ROTC? Other issue, Rosalie? Joseph, may follow up sa ROTC. ROTC. Oh. Sir, you know. hmm. sige, sige, mama. Okay, go ahead, sir. I'm going through my notes anyway. Sir, sorry. Ibang issue lang po. Sir, regarding po sa pagkat short ng speech ni President Duterte sa Nikkei Forum last Friday, mm. uh, Foreign Secretary... Uh, Teddy Loxin believes it is an act of rudeness sa part po ng Nikkei organizers. Hindi daw po dapat lilimitahan yung speech ng mga heads of state sa mga ganong event. So was, it, was it Nikkei organizers that did it or our own protocol? Kasi if you notice, yung protocol natin, pumunta rin sa kanya at pinapalala na siya, meron siyang meeting with the Prime Minister. Meron, ta meron talaga siyang meeting with the Prime Minister. Nag-aantay na si Prime Minister. Di ba sabi niya, uh, nag-aantay na pala si Prime Minister. 
So, sir, hindi po kayo naniniwala. Sa, uh, hindi nyo po sinasangayunan yung paniniwala okay, ni... Kung, kung Nikki ang nagsabi, eh tama si Secretary Luxin. Pero napansin ko, pumunta rin yung protocol, parang seconds lang ang pagita. So, you also believe that it was an act of rudeness sa part po ng uh, Nikki organizers? Uh, rude, rude ni yun. Kasi you don't stop a president from delivering a speech ahead of state. But on the, as far as the protocol is concerned, <laughs> we have to remind the president that there is a schedule na iba. By saying so, sir, sa, so na insulto po yung pangulo. Well, he did feel insulted. <laughs> he made fun of it. If you notice, he made light of it. Does it have an effect sa relationship po ng Philippines at Japan? Oh uh, no, I don't think so. Hindi naman siguro. Most likely, if I may. Hazard guess. Baka kaya rin nagpasabi kasi baka kinontak na rin sila ng Nikkei organi organization ng ano, office ng Prime Minister to remind the President. Hindi natin alam po nung nakalagay ng note. Pero hindi naman po na orient ang Philippine delegation na may time limit <coughs> kasi po nag umalis din po dun sa speech si President eh, twice. None that I know. Hindi ko alam. Walang sinabi ang protocol. Uh, Pero actually... Alam mo, hindi natin alam kung ano nakalagay doon sa notes. Sinabi lang ni Presidente na <laughs> pinapestop siya. Di ba? Pwede rin naman na baka nagbibiru na naman si Presidente. Pero I don't think that's an issue. Ang it would be an issue kung talagang, oy tama niya, Mr. President, ang maganda na magsalita. Ibang usapan na yun. Pero sir, this uh, instance po will not hinder the President to attend other Nikkei conferences in the future? I don't think so. Presidente naman, he's a very reasonable man. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, Pia? Sir, balik po sa ROTC. Now that the President has certified as urgent itong mandatory ROTC training, yes. what can the palace um, say about yung mga criticisms that ROTC is a form of fostering blind obedience and the uh, discourage critical thinking among students? I don't think so. Because I, when I was in college, I underwent reserve officer training course. You're taught there how to handle firearms, how to have discipline. You're lectured on many things, even on laws, even on history. But hindi ko kumakama na ROTC dahil parang, ano, hindi, ibig sabihin, mahina yung teacher mo, hindi kayo binigyan ng, uh, sa amin ganun eh. In, in the place where I graduated from, University of Nueva Cáceres in Naga City, ganun ka-extensive yung ROTC training course namin. Pero kinu-question sir yung pagiging mandatory kasi um, other, um, yung nag-oppose po doon sa RO, mandatory ROTC are saying that yung mga sinasabi na discipline and uh, nationalism, patriotism could be taught in other subjects or in other activities. At hindi kailangan daw, sir, na mandatory yung ROTC. Ay, walang nila siguro yun. Pero alam nyo, in other countries, mandatory. Dapat talaga mandatory. Dapat nga. Ako, I share the view that all citizens, able-bodied citizens of the Philippines, male, kahit a female, should be required to have compulsory military training for our own security. Pagdating ng panahon, para tayo, marunong tayo. Para sa ating lahat yun. Sir, based sa mga nakikita niyo action ngayon at uh, para ano pag-iisip ng mga kabataan, do you think na kailangan talaga na magkaroon ng mandatory ROTC training for them to be disciplined or to be instilled? I think so. Sa kanila because the, the onset of technology, para <laughs> ang concentration lahat, puro sa, ano eh, sa high-tech instruments like telephone, laptop, at kung ano-ano pa. Parang wala na, hindi na, kulang na, wala na talaga, ano eh, wala na disiplina. Thank you, sir. Okay, Joseph? Sir, iwan ako muna yung ROTC. Uh, yun pong sa syntax, sir, sa tobacco excise tax. Yeah. I think the the lower chamber, the House of Representatives, will endeavor to pass their own. We maybe adopt the Senate but version. But the Senate, you want to pass sir. So can we say definitely that if it reaches the president's table, he will sign it? Oh, because certainly. He's, 
Huh? I think so. Yes, that, that was certified urgent by him, right? Yeah. So just uh, a soundbite now. Why is this important? Uh, signing the uh, tobacco. Excise well, we tax? need funds. We need funds apart from trying to discourage people from killing themselves, <laughs> in a way. Because they were saying that smoking cigarette causes cancer and is in <clears throat> is dangerous to one's health. Ate pa shift lang ako ng konte. Sir, dun po sa... Oh, that reminds me, no? Yes, sir. I think this is important to for you to know and to our teachers. I just received from Secretary Briones, coming from the Department of Budget Secretary, that if you increase 10,000 pesos for every teacher in this country, it will cost us 150 billion pesos. That is why we appeal to our teachers that since this is a huge amount, medyo habahabaan yun ang pasensya talagang maghahanap tayo ng pera para sa inyo. I'd like to pick up on that, sir. So ibig sabihin, sir, uh, the increase, the salary increase is not doable? Hindi. Ang sinasabi ko lang, masyadong malaki na kailangan talagang yung mga economic managers natin ginagawa ng parang kung saan nila kukunin, saan nila itatransfer yung whatever. Basta we're doing something about it. So we will increase their salaries, but they, have to, they would have to wait, no? Well, the, the president has committed himself and he has not reneged on any commitment he has made during the presidential elections. So in 10,000, do you think that's a negotiable uh, rate? Maybe go down a little bit? Yeah, uh, they okay. So you will commit to the 10,000? No, not necessarily. Yun ang, hindi, yun, basta yun lang ang message na tinanggap ko. Mm -hmm. Pero may pag-asa pa naman, sir. Hindi naman to shutting down the proposal, no? Eh, sig baka, 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 hindi ko alam. Ha? Baka yung, kung mga installment. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But what is it, what is I think certain is that the president really wants to increase the salaries of the teachers. So just one last point. Dun po sa Marcos Jewelries, no? Um, wala namang objections yung OP, except that ang sabi ng visit ng SOD, ni SOJ, sir, is that the proceeds of the auction sale should. Uh, directly benefit the people. When yes. you say that, not necessarily CARP, or it can fund other projects of the government. Well, yeah. It applies to everything that will benefit the people by way of whatever projects. Mm -hmm. So can it fund the teacher's salaries? Well, it's possible, right? two billion. Let's get 50 billion. Copy, sir. Thank you. Okay, MPC, may tanong pa kayo? MPC? Yes, sir. Tina. Sir, baka mas alam nyo, yung sa PCGG, lo, I think there was a provision saying na proceeds of uh, illegal wealth should should uh, should go to CARP. Hindi naman yata na-dissolve yung ano, yung I'll check on that. PCG I'll check on that. Kung okay. specific yung ano. Although yung CARP law, Ay, may, pwede naman. Na Even assuming na merong oh. ganong provision, oh, Congress can always amend that. Thank you, sir. Okay, may tanong ba, MPC? Tina Maradir? Microphone, please. Sir, good afternoon. Sir, in an international uh, security forum in Singapore, China admitted to deploying troops and weapons to the South China Sea and said that they have every right to build defense facilities on natural and man-made islands in the area. So with this admission, Paul, uh, do you think this will somehow change the president's stand regarding our claims, regarding our territorial dispute with them, or at least reconsider how to go about it? But he has not changed his position on China, as far as he's concerned. 
the well, the parts of the South China Sea are ours per the arbitral ruling. Hindi naman na babago yung posisyon niya nun. Sir, lastly po, um, yung your reaction po to acting U.S. Defense Secretary pa Pat Shanahan that the United States will not ignore daw po China's behavior in the South China Sea and that he was short of saying that they'll have more presence in the area. Well, as far as I'm concerned, anyway, they've been saying that, but they're not doing it. Parang puro posturing lang ang nangyayari sa kanila. All right, sir. Thank you, Paul. Okay, uh, Greg, TV5. Yes, sir. Uh, good, uh, good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon, sir. Secretary Pandela. <laughs> Greg Rigoro po from TV5. May we get the palace's reaction, sir, tungkol dun sa allegation ni Montulfo against Secretary Andanar mm -hmm. na sila daw po ni... And, uh, na Secretary Andanar and Ben Tulfo are the ones who manipulated daw po yung DO controversial DOTPTV deal before. I will not preempt Secretary Andanar's comments or response to that. I leave it to him to respond. But will the palace call out... Uh, Mr. Montulfo, since he is a appointed uh, special envoy by the president. Mr. Tulfo has raised some concerns, and Secretary Andanar, I'm sure, will be responding to those concerns. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, Julie? Sir, just to follow up to the China question, uh, you said that... Uh, the U.S. has been posturing uh, in the South China Sea, saying that it will not, as Tina said, ignore, it, it will no longer ignore China's actions in the maritime dispute. Does the Philippines want the U.S. to do anything at all? Since you're saying that, like, what the Philippines would want stability in this part of the world, in that part of the world. Philippines' position is that Every country has a right to use the waters in the South China Sea as well as the airspace. And we want peace and quiet in that area. So anything that will provide such kind of atmosphere, we are for it. So we are if the presence of the U.S. will make it so, then that's good for all of us. All of the claimants. What and do, do we have like any parameters as, as to hanggang saan lang pwedeng mag-act yung U.S. Uh, South China? Ah, hindi na nila po. Saying U.S., you cannot also impose on them kung anong gagawin nila. Nasa sa kanila na yan. What I mean is, sir, and, uh, uh, up to what limits lang do you think sila pwede mag-act? in the South China Sea so as to maintain peace and stability in the region? That will be left to their judgment kung hanggang anong limits nila. Thank you, sir. Uh, may f uh, China follow up yan? O other? Tina muna, <coughs> Tina. Okay na. RJ and then Joseph. And then si Ace. <laughs> Wala si Ace. <laughs> <laughs> o oh, si Ace na lang kung ganun. Sir, uh, would the palace as again the two for siblings or brothers to return the 60 million uh, being questioned by the commission and audit. It's about the ads payment with the DOT. If I, I don't know if I'm correct, that is supposed to be being investigated by the DOJ. Mm -hmm. So it's DOJ's call. The commission and audit has been asking them to return the, the money and even the DOT with Secretary Puyat. Yeah, but the tool force. Uh, then DOJ will have to do something about it. So, what's your call, sir? <coughs> That's DOJ's call. Their, their mandate is to prosecute those who have violated the law. But of course, the palace wants the tool folks to return the money. The palace always wants that laws are not only enforced but are obeyed mm -hmm. to its fullest extent. As we said, there are no sacred cows in this government, friends or allies. Do you want them to return the money as soon as possible? 
depends on the DOJ because it's their call. They will have to do something legally about it. Okay, thank you. Okay, Joseph. Sir, sure, just a little bit on China, no? In uh, China, during the bilateral meeting ni Presidente and President Xi, he mentioned the arbitral tribunal, no? And then in Japan, he says that is it right for any country to own the uh, whole sea, a whole ocean? Are we um, detecting here a increase in terms of boldness of the statements of the president? And uh, is this can you can we call this as a shift probably in the rhetoric of the president in the sense that now he is publicly and slowly asserting our win and our sovereign rights over the area. I think he's expressing a sentiment of all countries of the world with respect to the use of the seas, with relative to the law of the seas and the use of the seas. We will not, going back to the earlier question, sir, we will not object to a U.S. presence in the area. Which area? Our area? Um, South China Sea and probably somewhere near the West Philippine Sea. We will object if they will come to our area. U.S. <laughs> or U.S.? Yeah. Okay. Because we're supposed to be a sovereign country. No country should also come into our territory so we without can our consent and knowledge. Where can they stay, sir? Because you said earlier we want peace and stability in the region and if U.S. presence will bring about that desire. Yeah. We don't, it's going to be good for us. So do we desire- Good for all, good for all. Correct. Good for only for us. Do we desire a U.S. presence in the area? We desire peace and quiet in that area. The, sir? No matter upon whose initiative coming from any country. MPC, may tanong pa kayo? Lana? Okay, Joseph. Sir, is it true? Na what happened to the program of uh, Mr. Urban Tulfo yesterday? Oh, hindi ko alam. What was the latest? Hindi ko yata alam. Tell me. It didn't air today. It didn't air, air yata yesterday, sir. So is it... Maka naman nakalib. Is the... Nakalib? Yusek Ignacio, can you help us here? Sino <laughs> nasa Yusek? Who is... <laughs> Si Erwin, nasa US. Uh, so, yeah. so nothing naman, sir, na the, the program is being suspended or anything wala like akong, that? Wala akong alam about that. Mm. Next question, AC. Yeah, AC sir, going back to the issue involving um, Tulfo and Secretary Andanar. Sir, since the Ombudsman is also investigating the DOT um, anomalous contract, alleged anomalous contract, is the president considering maybe um, replacing muna si Secretary Andanar since he is being connected to that deal? I mean, wala pa namang decision yung ombudsman, but matagal nang naumpisahan yun. It's been a year, if I'm correct. He has not made any announcement on that. But since, Nor a statement. Okay, but since uh, Mon Tulfo was saying or is saying that uh, he has information linking Secretary Andanar to that anomalous deal, and sinasabi niya na involved po talaga. Is this something that the president will consider, sir? I think it's the ombudsman or whoever investigating body that is investigating it. That will consider those statements because that will come in the form of a test, uh, a witness statement. Yeah, but it's okay with the president that uh, Secretary Andanar is working for him despite these allegations, sir. You know, it's basic in law that allegations are not proof. But previously, sir, with the other um, government officials that he fired, those were based on allegations also. So how is this not different? Not necessarily. The allegations are there, but Usually, not only usually, the president makes discreet investigation. 
So in this case, wala pa siyang personal discrete investigation? Hindi natin alam. Most likely meron. Okay, Pia? Sir, yung dun lang sa Smartmatic, because the yes. Comelec is saying that uh, there is a need for a legal basis before it bans Smartmatic from participating in the next elections or before it junks Smartmatic as a technology provider in the next elections. Ito pong mga sinasabi ni President Duterte na allegations of fraud, is that enough basis for them to drop Smartmatic, sir? The President's position is very clear. There have been allegations of certain glitches <clears throat> excuse me, that somehow affect the impression that this Smartmatic is competent to handle the a server. You, if you recall, during the presidential elections, there were strong allegations that the president lost three million votes. And presently, the opposition is also complaining about the votes that they got. They say, although not enough to make them win, they still say na kukonte, mas magan, mas malaki daw. So the, the point of the president is, kung meron mga ganitong reklamo, o eh siguro, tingnan nyo, baka yung server nyo eh, kailangan nyo ng palitan. Kasi he doesn't want that any election in the future would be tainted with a whiff of fraud or allegations that will produce the effect of people doubting the credibility of an election. Kaya nga sinasuggest siya, tingnan nyo. Now, hindi ko alam yung sinasabi naman ng COMELEC na there should be a legal basis. Hindi ko alam kung ano yung, ano yung legal basis. Uh, kasi they're, they're explaining, kasi um, uh, part of the procurement, of course, is yung bidding process. And you have to have legal basis before you ban any supplier from participating in the bidding process for uh, the well, elections. The legal basis, if you have not done efficiently what you're supposed to do, that's the legal basis. But that, sir, remains to be allegations, but in sir, allegations of fraud that it happened still has not been proven. Like for instance, still yung are mga, for instance, yung mga glitches mo. Tapos yung kontrata mo is to give, for instance, the results of the elections within a span of time. Tapos hindi mo nagawa. O, oh, hindi eh, meron kang breach. O, oh, di may legal basis ka na. Yung nakaraang elections, sir, yung mga glitches are enough to disqualify them in the next bidding process, tama po ba? Eh, kung, kung yung glitch will result in the delay, substantial delay in the results, boy, if I were the lawyer, I would argue, you, there is a breach. Kasi hindi mo sinunod yung kontrata mo, dapat walang delay. What, what particular glitch are you referring to, sir? Hindi ba nagkaroon ng delay? Tapos ang daming nagmamalfunction? Dapat hindi nagmamalfunction yun. Eh. Ang daming malfunction eh. Kesyo hindi, hindi tinatanggap yung balota. Di ba? Sir, you're, yung delay, sir, you're referring to yung delay yung na transmission sa transparency. Yung sinasabi na 6 hours. Di ba mayroong sinasabi 6 hours delay? Yun ang nireklamo ng marami. I remember, sir, I asked you that about the delay. And you said na wala namang issue because the Correct. same results have been yes. transmitted to the other two yes, servers. Yes, but people are using that precisely to question the credibility of the elections. But you said so before, sir. No, sa akin lang. There's no question sa of the credibility. Lang yun. That's, a, that's my perception. But my perception, wala yan. Pagdating sa kung ang taong bayan na nagkikwestiyon na sa'yo, eh. kahit anong paliwanag mo, pag pinagdudahan ka na, may problema ka na. Okay, so okay, last Yun ang ayon ni Presidente, yung nagkakaroon ng pagdududa ang tao. Okay, Tina? Tina Mendez? Okay. 
Joyce Balancho. And then last question na tayo kay Rosary. Sir, regarding nandun sa gray area, sa dismissal ni Deputy Ombudsman Karangdang, have you already figured it out? Yung gray area po, um, no? sa dismissal ni Deputy Ombudsman Karangdang, have you already figured it out, sir, ah. if it's final and executory? The decision in administrative cases is executory. So his post is but, already... Teka muna, si Karangdang yata nag-leave. Yun nga, sir. So oh, anong effect niya dun sa final po niya na leave? Void yeah. na rin po. Consider. Ganun lang ang mangyayari doon. So, Hindi ko alam kung nag-file siya ng certiorari. Wala pa yata. Yes, he has 15 days. Technically, sir, his post is already considered vacant. Yeah. And the president will appoint a new deputy ombudsman. That's his call. Kung mag-appoint na siya o aantayin niya yung... Aantayin, sir. Kaso. Ang... Yung kaso kung magpa-file siya o kung maging final na or whatever. Okay, AC? Sir, does the palace have jurisdiction over over the ombudsman and deputy ombudsman Karandang? Because there was a Supreme Court ruling yata before saying na walang jurisdiction yung, yung palace over the ombudsman. But do you expect ombudsman Samuel Martres to still enforce that OP decision? I remember meron din sinasite na constitution na case eh, na sinabi ng Supreme Court may jurisdiction. Di ba? Parang gano'n eh. I remember meron gano'n eh. So as far as you're concerned, the OP ruling, sir, should be recognized by Ombudsman Martires kasi siya rin yung mag -e enforce nung, nung ruling niya. Ay, nasa since... call niyo. Kasi I remember, di ba si Chief Morales, sabi niya, he will not enforce. He, will do, he would not enforce. Okay, naki-ombudsman naman yan. Bahala na po si Ombudsman Martires. Yes. And then, bahala na rin si Karangna if he, he wants to question. So, there will be a final definitive ruling coming from the Supreme Court when a case is brought before it for decision. Okay, last question na tayo, Rosalie. Rosalie Cos. <coughs> Sorry, sir, I have to ask this question because some members of the LGBT community reacted to the statement of the president during his speech. That? For the Filipino community, na ano? yung pong sinabi niya dati po siyang bakla at nagamut niya po yung sarili niya when he met Ma'am Hanilet. So, was the president serious when he said that he was a gay before? <laughs> I will ask him. <laughs> so, you're... Uh, pero I don't think na that was... Uh, I don't know. I... I don't know if it should offend them. Bakit ma-open ang gay community? Impliedly kasi, Di dapat sir, matutuwa sila. Impliedly po kasi nabanggit niya po na ginamot niya yung sarili niya. So, uh, parang sinasabi niya na isang disease or disorder yung pagiging gay when yung pong mismong World Health Organization ay nagsabi na hindi siya disorder or disease kundi isang sexual orientation po. Oh, eh, kung it was a, a sexual orientation, ano man masama kung ipalitan niya yung sexual orientation niya? Uh, Parang sinasabi po ng Pangulo na nagagamot yung pagiging isang gay na hindi naman po siya disease or disorder. Kaya hindi, po may mga na-offend. Baka naman na yung niya ng gamot eh, nagpalit ako ng sexual orientation ko. Baka hindi naman yung gano'n ang ibig niya sabihin. But uh, let me say that the President is always conscious on not offending the sensibilities of these special classes. Ano siya eh? Ma mabait na tao si Presidente. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rosalie. MPC, no more questions? Okay, thank you, Secretary Panelo. Were you offended? <laughs> you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, thank you, MPC. Back to my studio sa Radio Pilipinas and People's Television Network.